Yeah, I talked to a I talked to a senior civil servant a few years ago who said that FOI was the worst measure ever introduced, was the worst policy ever introduced um, by by policymakers or by politicians in Ireland. He said it, it was it was it was the worst thing to happen to the civil service because they couldn't do their jobs. Um, if civil servants can't do their jobs because they're afraid of having their decisions scrutinised, then I think we need new civil servants. The, the upshot of this is that Ireland has in many ways become more secretive because they haven't just diluted the Freedom of Information Act, they, they have turned it into something akin to a secrecy act whereby people are, are, are charged exorbitant fees to, to access information that is owned by the public. I mean, Ken Fox at the Sunday Tribune paid more for the details of politicians' expenses than John O'Donoghue paid for his, for his uh, chauffeur-driven car from Terminal 1 to Terminal 3 at Heathrow. His nephew's company. Now, uh, that, that's, that's indicative of a problem. And if I've, I've talked about whistleblowing, we've been campaigning for, for whistleblower protection for some time. We've, we've talked about the need for, for the regulation of lobbyists, um, for curbs on, on political spending and uh, lower thresholds for, for disclosing political donations. There's no silver bullet, no more than, than, than whistleblowing itself is going to tackle uh, corruption. If there is no culture of sharing information, you are going to see the kind of events that we've seen more recently with people leaking information they believe should be in the public domain. And it costs them and it costs the organisations they work for dearly, both in terms of their reputation and for the whistleblower in terms of their liberty and, and their livelihoods. So uh, we, we need to see the introduction of, 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 of a wide array of, of, of reforms, very cost effective, relatively painless measures. Uh, in spite of what some senior civil servants would would, would think. Yeah, on FOI, if I could, you know, this state has, uh, I'm a public server myself, I have a type, you know, I'm obviously paid by uh, the taxpayer, um, has been served very well by some of its civil servants and has been served very badly by others and there's been a significant <coughs> sort of maladministration. And I'll give you an example, like one can only look at the shocking decisions basically that came out that caused the, the Beef Tribunal for instance in the 1990s, export credit insurance, uh, which clearly was, you know, politically motivated. Um, and what's happened, I think, in terms of freedom of information is that an attempt to open up society has been treated by those who are paid by that said same society as a threat. And this is the last thing that should happen, but this is the instinctive reaction. And of course, now we hear stories about a civil servants not wanting to put anything on paper or on email, you know, that the, the, the advice is all oral, and of course this is a very bad thing for the state and its history, because in 30 years' time when these things open up, we, we won't even be able to know why these decisions were taken at all. Uh, I think what's happened is the state uh, was overwhelmed in terms of the freedom of information requests it was getting, and you know, I, I think there's something to that. Uh, but what happens now is jump on that. There's only newspapers now, really can put in place FOI requests, because they're the only ones who have, who have the funds uh, to do it. And most of the stories we hear now in the newspapers, including Ken Fox's excellent work, uh, is from those who actually have the money to expose this. It's very difficult for the average citizen, like any of us, uh, to get information except what pertains to ourselves, because we simply <coughs> couldn't afford it. <coughs> Thank you very much, Arlene. We have two questions uh, queued up. Could I just um, maybe ask, in terms of yourselves as, as a group of people here this evening and today's publication of our ranking in the CPI, the Corruption Perceptions Index. Our ranking, I believe, John, is 14th. 14th. So, so apparently by this ranking we're 14th least corrupt country in the world. Would this group, would this room this evening agree with that? Do we feel that that's accurate? Would we be more or less corrupt? So if you felt that uh, 14 is a good, good number to put, Let's have a show of hands. What do we think that that's a good thing to do? Uh, I think it's, I, uh, you know, I'm the only one putting my hand. But I think yeah, it's, I don't think we're terrible. You see, it's, it's, it's like if you look at the corruption John paints, you know, and like I was a student years ago in, in Eastern Europe and you basically had to cough up to the guards if you wanted to, on, on the train. So, well, you're going to be toughed off, uh, you know, to get from, you know, 
Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic into Slovakia in the old days when it was all Czechoslovakia or whatever. You know, we don't have that type of corruption here. If you measure our corruption with people below us, you know, I spent a lot of time in the United States. Is the United States more manifestly corrupt than Ireland? I, I, I wouldn't think so. Uh, in fact, it has got much more significant lobbying registration rules, which I have, ar have argued, maybe not very <laughs> persuasively, is a good thing. Um, it, you know, and while 14th, you know, and we, you know, as an informed group here, can see the evidence of the Beef Tribunal, of Moriarty, you know, of Flo we all kind of suspected these things happened. Now we have evidence, Do you know, and I think those arrests on, on Friday, and we have to see how they work out, and another, another arrest today. Um, well, is that more corrupt? Like John's point is well made. It's because it's perception, we cannot judge how corrupt it is. I tend to think Ireland is that 14, you know, anything up to 20 is reasonable enough myself. Yeah, I, I mean, there is a variation in some of the feedback given by, by those collecting the, the um, uh, opinions, uh, the, the, the survey groups. Uh, one, one group um, would have ranked us in around 20th position with a score of 7.4. So there is a variation. Um, I mean, just 2006, we were ranked, I think, 2003, 2004, we were ranked in around 20th position behind Chile. There, there, there's, there's a band uh, of those within a certain percentage where, where I think we, we, generally speaking, belong. I made the point earlier today that the, there are no countries immune to corruption. There have been huge corruption scandals in Germany, the UK, France, um, Spain, and, and even in, in, in some of the Scandinavian countries in New Zealand where there were they're, they're Australia, 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 big, big corruption yeah, scandals, scandals and, and, and corruption scandals both at petty and grand level, political corruption, business corruption. So I think it would be inaccurate to say that that where 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 that th that this is is wholly unrepresentative. What it is representative of is a certain type of corruption. As I pointed out earlier on, we would rank far far lower on an index that was looking at the role of nepotism, the role of, of undue influence in policy making. That's that's a different type of corruption. I think that needs to be borne in mind. There are different types of corruption. Um, no, there's, 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 um, it's the information that's available at the time that's, that's given, um, and, you know, that's, it's clearly stated, I think, and when, um, I, I, I've never answered a parliamentary question as a civil servant, but I've seen them, um, and it's, it's stated generally that it's the information that's available, and then it's given, and, uh, you know, to, that's, so written up by the, civil servant and the, minister has to the minister has to approve it, of course. Yeah. Well, if he knowingly, I mean, if you could demonstrate that, that he knowingly gave it. Well, it's only, it's, it, you, yeah, that, I imagine that that would be a difficult thing to do, um, that you would have to know, and you would have to know that the information was, was misinformation provided to the, the minister, and that the minister, um, then the minister would have to be proven to have known otherwise when the minister read out the information in the doll.